Hello, my name is David Lee and I'm the Vice President of Engineering for the Virginia Asphalt Association. Today we're going to talk to you briefly about the basics of surface treatment. Surface treatment, as many of you may have heard, is also called a chip seal and that's for obvious reasons that the aggregate that's used in a surface treatment is sometimes called a chip because it looks like a small chip of aggregate. So sometimes you'll hear the term chip seals, sometimes you'll hear the term surface treatment. But all of them are a pavement surface that combines one or more layers of both the liquid asphalt, an emulsified liquid asphalt, and an aggregate. So you'll see that there are multiple layers of these types of materials being applied. At the end of the day, their purpose is to provide a water resistant layer to the pavement structure. They're there purely to, as a preventive maintenance treatment, to seal off that roadway surface so that water doesn't penetrate and do the damage to the pavement structure. But keep in mind, they provide little or no structural value to the pavement structure. Regarding history, as you can imagine, uh, from the beginning of time in the early 1900s when the automobile became more and more prevalent, horse and buggies were used on the road for years, speeds were very slow, damage was minimal. As the cars became more and more prevalent, damage to the roadway, the whole reason why we have roadway systems today, damage to the roadway became higher. Dust became a bigger problem because the cars moved much faster than a horse and buggy. So in the earliest days, they actually used oil on roadways. So they would apply an oil to the roadway, hoping to try to seal it off a little bit from moisture, but also to reduce that dust that flies up when a car comes flying by. So to just purely apply the oil to the roadway, while that may have been effective, particularly for dust control, it probably was a, a problem for, a, it was a mess. So what many began to do is, what you would think obvious, is to apply an aggregate to the top of that. So let's come back and apply aggregate on top of that. You see a picture to your top right where they're applying aggregate on top of it to try to, to seal that uh, liquid down, whether it be an oil or it be a liquid asphalt. So as early as 1930s and before, people were starting to do what was very similar to what you would call a surface treatment. A gentleman by the name of Frederick Hansen out of New Zealand is sometimes credited for the development of the surface treatment. You could probably say it's more like he was the first to truly document the overall process of surface treatment in a more formal way. Because even in VDOT specifications, in 1935, they have a specification for bituminous surface treatments. So people were using this method early on to try to seal off a roadway surface. Surface treatment throughout the years, we, we obviously have, from that time, developed surface treatments, used surface treatments, but as a, as a whole, the surface treatment stayed the same from those early 1930s all the way through the 1960s, 70s, and even into the early 1980s. And they perform very well overall to provide that service of providing a water resistant layer on top of hard surfaced and sometimes non hard surfaced gravel roadways. But as you can imagine, as the types of vehicles began to change, as the speeds of those vehicles changed, and as the need to apply these to roadways that had slightly higher volumes occurred, then began to have problems. One of those was fly rock. Fly rock would occur when a car came across a piece of pavement that had a new surface treatment on it. It had some loose rock on it, that rock would fly up and break a windshield. And that obviously is very problematic over time because you could have multiple windshield breaks and it's, it's, it's a hazard to the traveling public. Additionally to that, as that same higher volume of traffic and speeds occurred, some of that loose rock would come loose from the pavement and leave just pure liquid asphalt on the roadway. That obviously created a mess for the traveling public, but it was also a safety hazard because it could create a slick condition where in a rainstorm a pavement would become slick and therefore a car could have an accident. So we began to see these types of problems that made surface treatments unpredictable and a change was necessary. And that's when the more modern, what we call modified surface treatments began. Before I get into the details of what a modified surface treatment looks like, let's talk briefly about what the basic placement of a surface treatment looks like. As you can imagine, the need to have a clean surface is there to apply that liquid asphalt to. You can't apply liquid asphalt to an extremely dirty surface or it won't bond to that surface. So you've got to clean that of the dirt and the debris and the uh, soil or, or clay particles that are on there. So you come across that with a broom and that broom is either a power broom that's attached to a tractor, maybe attached to something like a bobcat. They broom that surface to make it clean so you can apply that liquid asphalt and it will actually bond to that surface. 
A distributor truck will then come across that pavement and it will apply that liquid asphalt at the given rate and immediately following that distributor truck has to be a spreader and that spreader will, will apply the aggregate that we talked about or the chips at a, it also at a metered rate and it'll apply that very rapidly behind that distributor so those two pieces of equipment are very close to one another they're moving down the road pretty quickly together as they're applying each one of those layers following the application of the aggregate that that aggregate has to be rolled in place it's rolled by either a steel wheel roller or a pneumatic tired roller a pneumatic tired roller is applied many times as you can imagine because most of our secondary roadways lower volume rural roadways uh, do not have a great profile. That profile can have rutting in it, it can have some undulations. That pneumatic tire helps seat that aggregate into the liquid asphalt better than the steel wheel sometimes. So you can see both types uh, on a surface treatment application. If you have a multi-layered system, you're essentially just applying multiple layers to that. So the same process is repeated. Once you've completed all of that and that initial layer has cured for a few hours, you have to come back and sweep that before you let traffic on it, if possible, because again, you're gonna have some loose rock on the roadway and you need to minimize how much loose rock is there to minimize that fly rock that might come up and break a windshield. Let's talk briefly about those elements that I just discussed, the liquid asphalt itself. The liquid asphalt is typically a CRS2 or a CRS2L. CRS standing for a cationic rapid set emulsion and the CRS2L is one that has latex modifier added to it. That latex modifier will actually assist in providing a little bit better bond of the aggregate to the liquid asphalt itself. And so sometimes you'll see a modification, they'll add the latex to it, certainly it also adds a little bit of cost. The coarse aggregate that's used that's coming out of that spreader I discussed, the first layer is a 8P aggregate. Many of you are probably aware of a number 8 aggregate you add the P designation when you're using it for surface treatments because we need that aggregate to be clean. We need it to be very clean so that the liquid asphalt and the aggregate will bond together. So it has a very low number 200 requirement. Additionally, you'll have that final layer, sometimes called the blot layer, that's a finer aggregate, either a number nine or a sand. Those also have specific specifications, just like all of these that have specific specifications for those materials. As I talked about earlier, there are different types of surface treatments. In those early days that we discussed, there was the single seal and the, and the double seal. So you saw a lot of, all the way from the 1930s into the early 1980s, most of the surface treatments were either a single seal, typically used on very low volume roads, or a double seal, which were on slightly higher volume roads. Again, then we've moved to now what we call the modified surface treatments, and we have a modified single seal and a modified double seal. Very simple in that. The last one that's on here I will just make mention of, and it's a type D blotted seal coat. I make mention of it only because sometimes you'll see it in some construction work. It is specifically for when a new roadway is being built from construction, and therefore it's applied as that roadway is built. That's the final surface. It's called a type D blotted seal coat. That's not part of the class that we're talking about today. For those modified surface treatments, the ones that we're using today, the application rates you see on this slide are the what's typically used for both the single seal and the modified seal. And they are just as they stated before. For a single seal, you have a single application of coarse aggregate number 8P. For a multi-layer system or a double seal, you have two applications of that coarse aggregate. And that's typically for the first application, you'll have a liquid asphalt CRS2 applied at a rate of about 1,700 gallons per square yard followed by that number 8P aggregate that's applied at about 1,500 pounds per square yard. Following that, for the single seal, you put that final layer, sometimes again called a blot layer, which is the number nine or the, um, or the sand. You again, you shoot the CRS2 and you apply that at a slightly lower rate of about 1,500 gallons per square yard. You put the uh, number nine aggregate on top of that at a rate of about 12 pounds per square yard all of those layers individually rolled in between uh, for, to properly seat that aggregate into the liquid asphalt. When you go to the modified double seal treatment, again, it's just two layers of that number eight aggregate layer being applied as opposed to just one. So you're shooting the liquid asphalt twice, you're applying that number eight twice in that application, and then you, but you're still putting that final blot. The final blot, the number nines, and the, um, 
and the, or the sand that's being used, that is what's typically considered the, the primary modification to these because it, see, it holds that number eight aggregate into that final layer and it keeps it in place. So the application of the surface treatments. As I stated early on, surface treatments are typically applied to lower volume roadways. They're not going to be applied to your interstate highways. They're not going to be applied to your high volume primary roadways. They are specifically for lower volume type roadways. They're going to be applied to your secondary roadway system and some very low volume primary road systems that are in our rural parts of the state. So recognize that you're not going to use these where you have higher volumes and higher speeds, largely for the very reasons we talked about earlier. You don't want that fly rock when you've got high speeds to come up and break windshields or high volumes of traffic. So you keep, keep it on the low volume roads. Recognize this is a preventive maintenance treatment. It's for roadways that obviously are in good condition. They can have some cracking uh, just due to age over time, but if you have structural deficiencies such as alligator cracking and so forth, you have to fix those. They need to be repaired prior to the application of a surface treatment, whether it be the modified single seal or the modified double seal. Those repairs will occur usually with a separate crew, then you'll come back and you'll apply your modified surface treatment on top of that. But they have to be in good condition. It's a preventive maintenance treatment. So let's talk about the key takeaways from this presentation. First and foremost, recognize this is a preventive maintenance treatment that provides a water resistant barrier to the underlying pavement structure and the subbase. So you're applying a application of this liquid and aggregate to seal off that surface from water intrusion into the pavement structure. That's its primary purpose. It's typically going to add somewhere between a half inch to an inch of thickness to the pavement. So you keep that in consideration, but recognize that half inch to an inch will provide no structural integrity to the pavement. It's not there to provide structure. So you can't say I need additional structure out here so I'm going to make, I'm going to put two applications of a roadway and get myself an inch or two of additional structure. And I, a surface treatment will not provide structural capacity to a given roadway. So recognize these key takeaways and I appreciate your time.